but I do think everybody has something that can drive them because most people do not want to be out of shape. Most people want to have a body that they are proud of and one that functions in a way they are proud of. And so even at an early age, that was something I had, but the results that I saw when lifting really were not what I would have expected for the effort that I was putting in. What's up guys? So today I wanna to talk about why I have been lifting for so long and why I stuck with it despite having initially pretty mediocre results and why I think almost everybody should do the same despite the results they may or may not be getting. So if you watch the video that is promoted on the homepage of my channel, it talks about genetics and it goes into saying, basically my thoughts on genetics, a lot of examples. It's the longest video I've ever made on the channel. And it's probably the one I'm most proud of because I put a lot of effort into that. And I think it is a very rational view of genetics, which is to say that obviously they vary greatly among individuals, but it shouldn't be the reason that you do or do not pursue something like lifting, right? Maybe if we're talking a sport like basketball, Sure, height, for example, is gonna be hugely determinant in who can be very successful at it, and that may sway you, but when it comes to lifting and you know what we call bodybuilding, I really think that everybody should be doing it regardless. And so when I think about why I stuck with it, I want to talk about that journey and why I think almost everybody else should and why if you are not getting the results that you're looking for, it doesn't mean that you should necessarily be giving up. So if you go back to that video, you'll see that I started really, I mean, I started losing weight when I was 10 years old. Around 12 years old is when I started to actually lift weights, just some very basic upper body lifts. And by the time I was 14, I took it very seriously. So I was doing body for life. I got heavily into that world and I went onto the forums. I started talking to a lot of people. It really became my life. And so part of the reason I stuck with it is simply because I'm an obsessive person. Even since I was a young kid, if I had a goal, I was going to reach it. I remember when I was eight years old, running laps around my park to try to get in shape for a sport. And I remember hearing these this older couple saying, I wonder how long he's gonna go. And the spouse said, you know, probably until he gets tired. And I just remember thinking, I'm already so tired, but this is relevant to the sport I was doing at the time. So I just wanted to achieve it. And I understand that that's maybe not super typical, but I do think that everybody has it within them to find a goal or something that they have a reason to drive forward, a purpose somewhere within the fitness industry. We talked before about varying goals. Maybe it's not gaining as much muscle as possible. Maybe it's more of a powerlifting approach, strongman. Maybe it's something more like CrossFit. But I do think everybody has something that can drive them because most people do not want to be out of shape. Most people want to have a body that they are proud of and one that functions in a way they are proud of. And so even at an early age, that was something I had. But the results that I saw when lifting really were not what I would have expected for the effort that I was putting in. I've mentioned before how I got very skinny, basically borderline anorexic. I was 5'11 and 130 pounds as a freshman in high school, but all I wanted was abs and I wanted that and I wanted to hit that goal of abs and I was so sure I'd be able to do it, but it just kept not happening. And I wish I would have told myself at that time, don't focus on that. It's hard to tell somebody who's young and impressionable and wants to look a certain way for a certain reason, don't even worry about that. But in hindsight, I definitely would not have focused on that. I would have said, hey, just eat relatively healthy. Don't miss out on social opportunities. Get bigger and stronger and focus on the abs later on. Lo and behold, now I actually have pretty good abs and it's something that I can get even in the mid-teens as far as body fat goes. But at that time, even if I was actually relatively lean, the muscle was just not there. So I knew that that was not going to be enough for me. And so I kept learning and I kept reading and I did see strength improvements. And that is something that I think is really important because in order to continue driving forward, you need some positive feedback. For the people who say, I don't care what anybody else thinks, I don't care about what anybody says, that is usually not the case. Most of us are, especially at a young age, somewhat driven by others, whether it's a comparison to others or feedback, but it could also be against your previous self. And so strength gains to me are one of the most important things for progress and staying in this long term because it gives somebody a very clear measure of something that is improving. When it comes to how we look, obviously that is a big reason why a lot of us got into it, but at the end of the day, it's so subjective and it can depend on the angle and the mirror you're looking at and the time of day. So many things go into that, but if you are getting stronger, that is very clear. And so for me, 
I really took that and I ran with it. But I remember playing sports and finding myself getting better at the sport. And so it's not some situation where, hey, I'm just so robotic that even with no progress at all, I just stuck with it. Like probably any human, if I were to do something for a couple of years and see no results, I probably would have given up. But almost nobody is going to be putting a lot of effort into this and see no results. Obviously, it's going to vary from individual to individual, but almost everybody is going to see some results there, especially when it comes to strength. And that is one of the big reasons that I tell my clients we really want to focus on that. Not necessarily a one rep max, but we do want to focus on progress on the lifts over time. The lifts that matter in the right rep ranges over time. Now, you can fast forward in that video and see that even by the time I was a senior in high school, I was at that point about six feet tall and 160 pounds, which is still very skinny, right? So you look at that, I mean, I have some pictures from me going on to college and I completely look like somebody who didn't lift. Again, that video, the genetics video really shows that. And it's easy still to say, I mean, I had friends who would say, oh man, this guy's only been lifting for a year. Why don't you look like that? But I definitely had friends making those comparisons. But I, I just wanted to point out that it definitely was not a situation where, oh, I had no positive feedback. The positive feedback I saw initially from getting lean and from having girls tell me, wow, you look a lot better. You're looking really good. Going from basically a fat kid growing up to getting thin, that really drove me. And then in high school, even though I was still relatively do you even lift, I went from 130 to 160 and was much stronger. I saw my deadlift numbers you know, going way up. I saw all of my numbers going way up and that was motivating. So in a way, even though I was very discontent with the amount of progress that I was making, I actually wish I could have told my younger self, you know, it's gonna be okay. You're going to make the progress eventually and you might not hit that goal of, you know, I think of when I was young wanting to be 220 pounds at 10% body fat just because I thought that was a good goal. Sure, maybe you're not gonna hit that, but you're still gonna make great progress and to try to enjoy that journey. It's something that I think is really unfortunate just with younger generation. I don't think that's something that you can really change. It's very hard to tell anybody who's 15, 16, all the way up until low 20s that eventually you're gonna get there. And I don't even necessarily think that that's a wrong mindset because there are times in life when certain things are just better. You know, if you have ever read the book, Die With Zero, he talks about how certain times of your life are just meant for certain things, right? Maybe backpacking in Europe is amazing when you're 20, probably not so amazing when you're 40. The reality is that to be big, powerful, lean, and, and really aesthetic is a great thing for a high school kid and a college kid. It's a great thing for yourself, I would say, as you get older, but let's just be real here. That there are advantages to that and to be a great athlete and everything when you are younger. So I do understand that, but to some degree, you do what you can do. And beyond that, there's nothing you can do. I mean, unless you start going down the rabbit hole of nowadays with SARMs and, you know, there's plenty of things that are technically legal, but over the counter that can lead to a lot of problems. There are a lot of things that can lead to temptation. And I would just really encourage anybody who's watching this, any of my clients, anybody out there who is thinking about trying to accelerate it to just take the time, learn the correct ways to do things. And eventually you will see those results. But I still would emphasize that finding something that is going to give you positive feedback is really important. And again, not that it has to be superficial, even not that it has to be dependent on anybody else, but within your goals, finding something that you can measure and track, at least for me, was the biggest reason why I continued because I knew something was happening and eventually, even if it was going much slower than I would have liked, I would eventually find progress. And then at this point, I would say that I am very happy with where I have come. Obviously, I would still like to make more progress. And that is one of the other things I want to talk about. But that journey really molded me. And I don't think that I would have anywhere near the amount of knowledge that I have on this topic if it came easily for me. In fact, I think I probably would be one of those guys who just thought, well, I've worked so hard, so now I know as much as I ever need to know, I know more than that guy, I know more than that guy. If I had this great genetic response, I would be a very different person, not just physically, but intellectually, I would have learned so much less along the way. So that brings up the final point here, which is basically, will I continue this, right? Not just lifting, but this journey towards progress. And that is where I think it's important to be able to pivot because the reality is I'm always going to be lifting, right? As long as I am capable of lifting, I'm going to be doing it. But I try to be consistent with my messages. And that is to say that, finding progress somewhere is important, right? I think it is very rare you find somebody who is going to be lifting for 30 or 40 years 
who doesn't at least believe that something is happening, right? Maintenance is very difficult mentally. It might be easier to maintain muscle than to gain it, but to accept that you are just going to maintain from now for the next 30 years is very hard, right? This is why somebody like a Jeff Alberts is very impressive because he has been able to be at the top of his game for the most part for over 30 years now. But a key point is if you look at his posts along the way, his videos, he believed that he was making progress, right? Whether that was, hey, I actually gained muscle or hey, I've done this prep much better than I used to and I was able to balance my life in a better way. There has to be some belief in progress. I just think generally, not even just with lifting, but in general, if you are working a job and you're going in there and you're just thinking, oh, even if you're making good money, it's very unlikely that you're gonna feel satisfied in your career if you're gonna make the same money, even if it's good, the same money year after year and make no progress. People want to scale up in life, people want growth. And so even if I think, hey, I might not gain any more muscle for the rest of my life, that is possible. It's still important for me to say, hey, you know what, there's something else I can progress on. That might be a flexibility goal. That might be a calisthenics goal. That is something that I have considered a lot more lately is getting into more of calisthenics. This is the heaviest I've been in a while. I'm around 210 pounds right now and a form of progress that is different than the progress I've been after for so many years might be cutting down, being a very lean 185 and getting into calisthenic goals. It might be trying to get my cardiovascular conditioning up, but regardless of what I end up deciding on, there has to be a measure of progress. And while there are some people who just go to the gym, they don't track anything, I would still argue that I believe those people probably assume that they are making more progress towards some goal because of that. All right, guys, so that is the video. I wanted to go into it a little bit more in depth here because a lot of people have reached out over time, over the months, and asked me what kept you going and how long did it take to look like I lifted? And I would say it probably took about seven years, really, to actually look like a guy who was at least athletic, right? To have some lifting background. And I'm very glad that I stuck with it, right? It really has shaped who I am. So I wanna go into more detail on that. If you have any questions about it or comments, comment down below. Many of you may know my Instagram has been deleted for unknown reasons. So I have a backup account if you wanna DM me. Uh, but I hope you guys liked the video. Again, comment down below, subscribe, and I will see you next time.